So this is the EVGA GTX 770. It is old and it is kinda slow, being based on the older Kepler architecture, but it can still play games pretty decently. What it cannot do, however, is play YouTube videos. No, not because the GPU is not powerful enough in terms of compute power, but because the GPU does not have the necessary media engines that can handle YouTube's VP9 video codec. VP9 is a video coding format that was developed by Google as an alternative to the proprietary technologies such as H.265 and H.264 codecs. In contrast to those, Google lets anyone freely use their VP9 codec royalty-free. It is meant to be more efficient and faster to encode than H.264, similar to H.265, and started being used by YouTube in 2013. Google gradually changed the whole platform to only use VP9 for most of its videos, around the year 2016, when Intel launched their Kaby Lake CPUs and Nvidia launched their Pascal series GPUs, where both natively supports VP9 decoding in their media engines. This support of decoding VP9 is added in the hardware itself. A slice of silicon in the GPUs that are fixed function blocks only meant to decode VP9 video. This is nothing new as media engines and GPUs have always existed as fixed function blocks to decode various popular video codecs. These fixed function blocks perform their specific tasks exceptionally well, being multiple orders of magnitudes faster and more efficient than using the CPU for decoding or encoding the videos. In fact, this is why Apple was so adamant about their media engine capabilities in their new M1 chips. A more capable and faster media engine means you can do tasks such as video editing that requires decoding and encoding videos in different codecs extremely fast and efficiently. So what happens if you play YouTube videos with older GPUs? Well, here I am using Gamers Nexus Disappointment PC video as the benchmark, as they often upload 4K 60fps high bitrate videos which are most demanding on YouTube aside from the rare 8K videos. And really, you can use any other 4K 60fps YouTube videos to test this out as well. You can see that the GPU does literally nothing when playing the video. The GPU's media engine just cannot decode VP9, and so the GPU sits there idle. Sure, the 3D workload may show utilization, but that's just from displaying the elements in the browser and not really from the video itself. The video is being decoded by the CPU. As you can see, playing a YouTube video is taking up a significant amount of CPU time. As I play and pause the video, you can see the CPU utilization jump up by a huge amount when playing back 4K 60fps video, hovering around the 20-30% to CPU usage mark on this 5.1GHz Intel Core i7-11700K CPU. When you consider that this CPU scores about 16,700 points in Cinebench R23, 20% of that is about 3300 Cinebench points which is about the performance of a stock i7-2600K. So what this means is that if you have a GPU like the GTX 770 that cannot decode VP9 via its media engine, you need a CPU that is at least faster than an i7-2600K to be able to decode this video smoothly. This means that quad-core i5s without hyper-threading are out of the picture even while overclocked. This is also why I always put people off of buying cheap GPUs such as the GT710 or GT730, which also uses the Kepler architecture and therefore cannot decode VP9, and instead recommend at least buying a GT1030 if all you need are display outs for web browsing usage. Then again, you can always just lower the resolution and not play the video at 4K 60fps if you don't have a powerful enough CPU. One other way to fix this problem would be to use the H.264FI extension, which if you enable will limit you to 1080p resolutions at maximum and request H.264 encoded AVC1 video. This will allow older GPUs to decode YouTube videos and hardware as H.264 support goes a much longer way back than VP9. This is especially useful in older laptops to extend your battery life, as you can see, Decoding a video using the media engine barely increases the power consumption of the GPU at all, while if you decode using your CPU, you will naturally significantly use a lot more power because your CPU is not sitting idle. So what happens if you use a GPU that can decode VP9? Well here on my Pellet RTX 2060 Super, you can see that while playing back 4K 60fps video from YouTube, the media engine is actually being utilized a significant amount decoding the VP9 video while my CPU sits mostly idle. This is the power of a fixed function media engine. As a result, I have a few recommendations for when you're looking to buy an older GPU in the current market. 
especially if you are aiming to build a media PC to browse the web and play YouTube videos. If you can't afford it, try not to buy older GPUs than Nvidia's Pascal generations as those are the first GPUs that can decode VP9 video. So something like a GT1030 is the cheapest GPU that you can use to decode VP9 and also all the modern video codecs, making it the ideal cheap GPU for media consumption PCs. Or if you can, get Intel CPUs no older than the 7th generation KB Lake series or the low power Apollo Lake series, as those integrated GPUs can also decode VP9 video. AMD GPUs on the other hand didn't have VP9 decoding until the RX 5000 series, which means that their extremely popular and plentiful Polaris series RX 400 and RX 500 cards cannot decode VP9 video. This is probably because these chips were first introduced before Nvidia's Pascal chips. Fortunately, AMD has all their Ryzen series of APUs support VP9 decoding in their Vega integrated GPUs, which started in the Ryzen 2000G series of CPUs and also includes all of their Ryzen based Athlon CPUs. So in the end, how important is VP9 decoding for most people? Well, for the most part, it really should only affect people that have high resolution 4K monitors and want to play back 4K videos from YouTube, but still have an old GPU that does not have VP9 decoding and a CPU that is too slow, which is really a very specific and not a common combination. So as long as you have a half decent CPU or lower the resolution, you should be able to play back YouTube videos just fine. The other disadvantage of not having VP9 hardware decoding is the increased power consumption of decoding VP9 video using the CPU. Where older laptops with Intel 6th generation Skylake or older CPUs and AMD non-Ryzen CPUs will struggle playing YouTube videos while also having drastically reduced battery life. The only exception to this is if the laptops have an Nvidia Pascal GPU. So because of this, I recommend that if you use older laptops to use the H.264 extension to significantly extend your older laptop's battery life. So that's about it. I thought this would be a pretty interesting video talking about VP9 codecs that YouTube has been using for a while now. But yeah, thanks for watching.